Mark Changizi here with your science moment. Today, I'm going to talk a bit, I might ramble a little bit, about being aloof. One of the issues that we've been having over the last year is the kind of mass delusion and hysteria by virtue of COVID and the fear of COVID, which is real, but it's been astronomically exaggerated, and the interventions have been draconian, and the results a year later are frankly dystopian. What do we do about these sorts of events, how can we limit them? It's a research direction that I'm working on now. Uh, it relates to the, sort of the last book by uh, Dr. Tim Barber and myself, which is about the origins of emotional expressions and how these emotional expressions underlie the decentralized mechanisms of our reputation and truth finding mechanisms within a community. And they sort of determine social narratives. These social narratives are ultimately why we believe what we believe. We believe what is true, not by virtue of us being rational scientists, but by virtue of being in a community. And that community argues, and over time, some people rise in reputation and some people lower in reputation. And certain notions of what's right or what's true end up being added to the narrative. And it's very hard to unroll that. These are things I've talked about in earlier moment, moments. Well, when these things happen, as I mentioned, they're difficult to unroll, and they become sort of fixed, whether they were true or not. Now, of course, this is still much better than having centralized censorship, which is another thing that we're dealing with. But they, these decentralized mechanisms, although they may have worked when we were in a tribe of several hundred, there are severe problems when they wrap around the world and these social networks are tight, when small world networks encompass the entire Earth. So there's lots of potential ways of trying to deal with this in the future, but one of them is just personal responsibility. And one aspect of personal responsibility and how to stop these sorts of things is staying aloof. Now, this is actually related to something I've talked about with students for years in terms not of uh, society and mass illusions and the kinds of things that we're dealing with today, but just in terms of creativity. Within my own career, I've long avoided conferences. I've avoided getting to know people within the field per se. And I summarize these, this kind of principle amongst many others and uh, seven kinds of principles, sloth and all these other ones. And one of them is aloof I'll just talk about today. Um, and these were kinds of principles that could guide you as a scientist that can help you find hypotheses that are independent and, and creative. Because as scientific as science you think might be, and there's lots of principles that guide you on testing hypotheses, so there's no science of finding hypotheses, finding great interesting uh, discoveries. Where do you find these hypotheses? That's more of an art. And so one of these is being aloof. So rather than becoming part of an academic community and going to the particular conferences within that field when I was young, and, and whatever first discovery that made my some kind of mark in, on my resume, I could have just spent my time in that academic community. But I didn't. And the reason that I didn't is that I knew, as a theorist especially, I needed to find new ideas and new fields. And if I am a part of a community, my intuition is not based on theory. I wasn't working on that kind of societal, social, psycho-societal kinds of mechanisms at that point. But I just knew in my bones that you start hanging out with a community, you are going to be lobotomized. You start hanging out in a community, you only start to care about the problems that they care about. You, the problems in their space that they're worried about fill up the entire space of the universe of ideas. This is like New York City maps where they show that New York City fills the globe and all of the rest of the earth is just sort of barely fitting in and compressed on the sides. It becomes New York City centric. You, you not only then sort of over exaggerate the importance of the ideas within that field, but all of the other fields that are, you know, those people are stupid. They're focusing on these ridiculous problems that no one even cares about. They're just stupid, right? That's the attitude that you get in those fields. You also become really interested in achieving the rank of you know, that fellow over there or that, that particular professor over there. You want to become like the high rank people. And if you become medium rank, suddenly the lower, you know, the youngsters are treating you with respect. You, know, you love this, as humans love this sort of thing. It gets you bound to that community. It gets you bound to the social, to the social narrative, which is a narrative of the problems that are interesting and good and which problems are worth working on, which things are right and which things are untouchable. Certain kinds of things you can't even touch in that field, and those are exactly the ones that you want to touch if you want to make a big seminal discovery. And you can't see that once you're on the inside. So I knew this wasn't good for my career locally. It's not good for local optimization. But globally, I realized that I, in order to be a, 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 over the long haul, continuing to come up with independent discoveries, I had to be aloof. 
But that same, those same sorts of worries happen when you're involved in a political community. You, if you're part of the, a strong left or strong right, and you've got Trump or Biden in, your, in the top of your, of your Twitter handle, well, you're part of a, you've, you've committed yourself to a particular community. You believe the things that you do, to some extent because you've rationally thought about it, but a lot of the reasons that you believe what you do is because the social narrative in your community has told you that. Of course, you're part of that social narrative. You're part of the complex decentralized processes that led to these sort of arguments back and forth that led to particular things that you now believe are true. But it's not because you were able to really rationally see it, and you can't. None of us can once we're part of a community. The personal responsibility that you need to have is to stay aloof. Realize the kinds of illusions that you can be under when you're in a community. Those social narratives, you hear it from all these people, and they're high-ranking people that typically say the truth. That's why they're high reputation. And when you hear it from them, and another person, or another, all of these high-ranking, you, you believe it because it's part of the narrative. And that narrative can tend to bring forth the truth. But it has many more errors in modern society, which is all messed up in terms of the size of the network dynamics. So you maintain that kind of aloofness is a kind of responsibility each of us should have as a citizen that can help uh, 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 prevent a single narrative spreading widespread, earthwide, and creating the kinds of mass delusions which we've talked about before, which can wreck society. And that was your science moment.